what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sinus of FanDuel, who's helping us take an early look at the Daytona 500 and going over some of his favorite bets for that big race coming up in just a couple of weeks. What's going on, Jim? Yeah, Greg, the Super Bowl that matters, just two weeks away. <laughs> I could not be more excited. We get to talk some NASCAR here again in the hurry up. We'll be talking DFS uh, once the starting order is set uh, in late or in mid February. So I'm pumped. This one matters. What about the other one? You know, who cares? It's on Daytona for now. This one matters in Daytona, Florida, just a couple of weeks away, the week after the Super Bowl. On Fox, some call it a tradition unlike any other. So let's get into some of your favorite bets right now at the FanDuel Sportsbook. And we begin with William Byron, who is plus 2,000 in the number 24 car. And that's Jeff Gordon's old car, I believe. Yeah, and William Byron's actually carving out a legacy for himself because he is the most recent winner at Daytona. He won here back in the final race of the regular season, earned himself a playoff berth. So seeing him at 20 to 1 may lead you to believe that win for William Byron was a fluke, but I don't really think that it was. He had finished second in the July Daytona race the year before that. He led 44 laps in the 2019 Daytona 500. And this is not that shocking. The Hendrick Motorsports cars have always had a lot of speed in Daytona. Although speed does not matter as much in Daytona as it does elsewhere, it still matters a lot. If you can, you know, navigate your way through traffic, you know, link up with your teammates, you can make some pretty serious ground. And William Byron showed the upsides of that when he won here again last year. So he's 20 to 1. His implied odds of winning are 4.8%. If you look at my win simulations, which I'm cooking up for this year because why not he's at seven percent there so a pretty decent edge on William Byron here and I think that he is one of the best values in the field I will also say it's worthwhile to look around because right now Chase Elliott is 10 to 1 at FanDuel Sportsbook that's a little short but I think you could find him potentially a bit longer elsewhere if his odds lengthen at some point before the green flag drops I could talk myself into that my model really likes him as well Alex Bowman is 18 to 1 driving for Hendrick Motorsports too so in general, I was off of Hendrick last year. I was worried about how their bumpers would link up, thought it make, might make it tough for the Chevrolets to bump draft. They proved me wrong in the second Daytona race with William Byron getting that win. So I'm going back to the well here once again, uh, changing course here on the Hendrick cars. I think they're all pretty intriguing outside of Kyle Larson, but my favorite is William Byron. He is the longest of the Hendrick cars, 20 to 1. And I wouldn't be too shocked if he goes back to back this uh, in Daytona. That's what's kind of interesting, right? You're getting a guy at, at 21 who, who won in Daytona just last year. And it, this isn't recency bias, but someone that has proven to do it uh, in this car with Hendricks Motorsports, uh, William Byron, all of his teammates all kind of make sense. And at the band of sportsbook, you're getting him at 21 at the moment. So Byron makes sense for a bet at Daytona. If you want to double up on William Byron's number, you get to plus 4,000, and that's when you arrive at Chris Buescher. He's driving the number 17 car here. At Daytona, why is Busher someone that we should target at this number? He's really good at Daytona. It's pretty <laughs> simple. Like, that's the main reasoning here. And I think he's just an underappreciated driver. The number makes sense because, again, like I said, equipment does matter. And Busher's equipment is not very good. But he has been good at Daytona in the past, even with worse equipment than what he has right now. In the past three years, the past six Daytona races, Busher has three top five finishes. One of those was in the Daytona 500 last year. He was actually passing Denny Hamlin for the lead on the outside. Right after he got past Hamlin, the caution came out. He reverted back to the previous loop, so he went behind Hamlin. Finished third, so a bit disappointing because I had him. I had him as a bet there as well. Didn't win, but he was close, and I think that that does matter. He's been close in the past. He had a, a couple of top five finishes in 2018 as well. So the equipment is not good. He doesn't have like outside of Ryan Newman strict teammates to help him at the front of the pack. But we've seen the Fords in general work really well together here in the past, outside of just the Roush Fenway racing cars. Ryan Newman tends to run near the front as well. We'll, we'll have at least one teammate there. So we've all seen him do well at this track in bad equipment in the past. His equipment now better than it was back in 2019 and 2018. And again, 2018 is the year we had two top five finishes. So I'm on board with Busher once again. He is 40 to 1. I think that's a really encouraging number. He was the same number last year. He was 40 to 1 at close. We're getting him at the exact same number, even though he finished third in that race and had a chance to win once again. So I'm going to run it back with Chris Busher, kind of see what happens. I have a lot of faith in the Fords in general on tracks like this. So why not bet on Busher? Long shot once again, a guy with a proven history of Daytona, and see if he can actually solidify that win this time around. 
Chris Buescher here at 40 to 1 after finishing third last year. Uh, again, much like William Byron, like he won in Daytona last year, and you're getting him at 20 to 1 here. Uh, a driver that came in third in in the tough race in the course of Daytona 500 before that caution comes out, passing Denny Hamlin. Now you're getting him here at that same number, 40 to 1. The odds just say it's worth taking a shot on here again. One last driver to get to, also a plus 4,000, also named Chris. It's Christopher Bell in that number 20 car, Jim. Why is this number ring true to you? Yeah, this comes down to the teammate, Aaron. And we talked in passing about teammates with Byron and Busher, but I think it's especially pertinent here because at Daytona and at Talladega, you often see teammates work together. And what that means is a lot of times you want to target good teams and target big teams. And here, Christopher Bell moving now to Joe Gibbs Racing. It's his first year with Joe Gibbs Racing, now a teammate to Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, and Martin Truex Jr. All three of those drivers are 18 to 1 or shorter. Hamlin is a favorite, but Christopher Bell is all the way down at 40 to 1. Joe Gibbs Racing has won three of the past five races at Daytona. Hamlin has won two of those. Eric Jones won the other. Eric Jones, the previous guy to occupy the seat with the number 20 car. We also saw Joe Gibbs Racing flex some muscle last year in Daytona during the Bush clash because Eric Jones had this car that had just been beat up. It was terrible. But Denny Hamlin was lapped down and basically just said, eh, whatever, I'll push my teammate to the win. And Eric Jones got the win there. Now it's Christopher Bell in that car with this really good team. And yeah, you can look at Christopher Bell's track record at Daytona and Talladega. It's not great. He didn't finish better than 13th here last year, was never better than third in the truck series or the Xfinity series. But I am getting access to arguably the best team at Daytona for 40 to one. I'm going to take that every time. So Christopher Bell, May not have the track record like Byron or like Busher at Daytona, but he has the team, he has the equipment, he has the speed, and that does matter a lot. So I think that Christopher Bell, 40 to 1 in his first race is with Joe Gibbs Racing. I'm expecting to come out with a bang, and I think that 40 to 1, a really encouraging number for someone going to such a strong team. It's all about Joe Gibbs Racing here when going after Christopher Bell at 40 to 1. His teammates, obviously, is some of the best in the business that you name with Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr. there. But you're getting in on the team at a really good number here at plus 4,000 at the FanDuel Sportsbook right now. So take a shot with Christopher Bell. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, we appreciate the time, and we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks as the Daytona 500, the major event of February. Exactly. I guess I'll begrudgingly talk about that other game next week if I have to. But, like, you know, I can, in my head, you know, the, the, the Daytona 500 will be living there rent free. Only thing that could have made the other event better is if Jared Goff was in it. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Sonsman. Join us tomorrow. Tom Becky will wrap up the week with me talking about DFS for the NBA. Have a great night, everybody. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.